Hi, today I'm just going to run through a demonstration on how to replace a heating element in a TDP heat lamp. As you can see, this is the heat lamp I'll be working on today. It's usually the heating element inside the head here, which is uh, blown after hopefully a few years of good use and we'll be replacing it today with a new one. These ones can be bought for about $3 each if you can get them from China, otherwise for a few dollars more from a local supplier. I'm also going to be using a pair of side cutters, pliers, shifter, screwdriver. Just having a cutting knife handy is good. Uh, a bit of extra wire insulator is also handy and wire ends, although these two last items aren't super necessary, but um, handy to have if you can get your hands on some from maybe JCAR or some other similar supplier. So to start with we need to take uh, the guard off the bottom. With the, there's just a few screws around the edge here and we also need to take these screws off from around the top so we can release the cage so we'll just do that first. This will allow the, uh, the whole cage to drop, but it doesn't drop very far, so it's a good idea to push through some of the excess wire through here, just to give you a bit more clearance. So we can do that just by pushing that one through, and it will pull out the other side. Okay, the next step is to remove this um, mineral coated heating plate, again just with a screwdriver in the centre, that comes out pretty easily. Obviously the heat lamp is not plugged in at the moment, um, having the heat lamp plugged in while you do this would well be disastrous. Okay, so taking out the, um, the mineral plate and also the, um, the heat plate, we'll be able to see what's happened here. Usually you can see some area of damage on this heating plate of where, where it's actually blown and why it's not working anymore. I think it's just in this area here. Okay, so the next step is to remove this. This white fluffy stuff will sort of crumble and, and make a mess everywhere. It's not dangerous though, it's not asbestos, um, which some people may think or worry that it is. This is just a um, man-made substance, um, but of course the most dangerous thing is that it can make a mess. Okay, next step, removing this actual plate. So to do that, we need to um, drop everything out of the cage a little bit further. And we may have to release this earth wire just so we can get a bit more movement there. And we just do that by undoing this screw here. Now that wire just comes out, so that's just a tab. Remember that you'll be able to just put that back in by reversing what you just did. Now we should get enough clearance to pop the whole head out of the cage. Takes a little bit of fiddling around, but it should, um, should pop out reasonably easily. Let's get a bit more length by pushing this black wire through a bit more and now we have access to where the heat plate is attached up here. 
So the heat plate is has two wires that come through from the base and that come in into these two screws here. So all we're going to do is remove these screws, take the heat plate out, put the new one in and attach it in there. So we start by just undoing these two points here. And then they should pull out so you can see the ends. The end there is quite a fine wire, which is the same wire end on the new the new piece that's going to be installed. So pulling that one through. Okay, so once we've removed those, that'll allow everything from underneath to pull straight out. Okay. So we can put this one aside. So now we need to put the new heat lamp in. These wires are nice and long and they'll be much longer than the one that you've taken out. Don't cut them before you put it all back together. Just leave them nice and long and nice and long because you'll need that extra length. Okay. Now I usually find that um, putting this back in, we need to thread these wires through these insulation material here that takes it back up to this area here. So this can be the trickiest part of the whole job because um, it can be a little bit fiddly getting these wires um, to go back through these tubes easily. But we'll get started on that and see how we go. I might actually just pull that whole piece back through. At this stage, if you wanted to replace this tubing, if you had some of the the new tubing, it could make life a little bit easier. Or you could just keep using the old one. I think I'll just cut a new section today. And we'll just make that a little bit easier to thread that through and putting it all back through there. I find that if you actually uh, fold this wire over so it hooks over the end of the tubing, it can make the job a little bit more easy. Okay, so we've nearly got that through. Okay, so we've got the tubing through and we've got the wire that's come through with it. So we'll just try and make sure that stays there. We don't lose it when we um, do the other one. So we'll do a similar technique. I'll cut a new piece of tubing to a similar length. Okay, to try and pull those two wires through a bit further. Making sure the wire is staying nice and straight. I just noticed that it's looping a bit down here. When it loops, 
If a loop becomes too tight, it could damage the wire. Okay, so we've got our wires through, we've got the new insulation. We can turn it back over now and we can put the white stuff insulation packing back in. You can also get new heat shields like this. I don't have one today so I'm just going to reuse the old one. This one is a little bit damaged. If I had another one I probably would prefer to replace it at this stage but not today. These mineral plates can also be bought and uh, can be replaced. They usually go a very grey kind of colour when they're no good um, but they tend to last quite a long time. There's no need to replace that one today. So we'll put that back together. We'll take this screw and we're going to pop that back in. That centre hole can be a little bit fiddly lining this up. We'll see how we go. And then we can get back to connecting these wires these two wires here to where they're meant to be. So if you had a notice where we took the wires out from, then that's basically where they need to go back to. Usually folding over the end of the wire a few times is a good idea, it just thickens up the end. And you can cut the excess off with your side cutters. You can see I've just folded that wire over a few times and we're going to put it back in the hole behind and tighten up the screw that's on top. Give that a pull, that wire's caught in there now, which is good. So now we put the head back into the cage, reattach that earth wire, um, and, and do up the cage bolts, and that's basically it. this cage 
protector back on. That's pretty much it for the demonstration on how to replace the heating element in an infrared TDP heat lamp. There's definitely a few fiddly parts along the way. So I'll just put this final screw back in. Hope you've enjoyed today's demonstration and thanks for watching.